Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses and in this video we're going to be discussing Robert Flood. Taken from the Unknown World, a magazine devoted to the occult sciences, magic, mystical philosophy, alchemy, hermetic archaeology, and the hidden problems of science, literature, speculation, and history. Edited by author Edward Waite. Number 3. Volume 1, October the 15th, 1894. And I would like to give special thanks to Nessicus for narrating this video. The late Mr. Hargrave Jennings, an esoteric literature, once made a pious pilgrimage to the quiet village of Burstead in Kent, where beneath the name of the church the dust of Robert Flood has rested for a period approaching three centuries. Poor Mr. Jennings, of whom one would like to speak tenderly, remembering the hackneyed adage, De mortui nil nisi bonum, in several editions of his curious theosophical melange, entitled The Rosicrucians, Their Rites and Mysteries, posed as a serious exponent of the philosophy of Robert Flood, but there is nothing to lead one to suppose that he had done more than dip into his writings in the dilettante manner of a literature, more especially when he is dubbed esoteric. He certainly never attempted a comprehensive exposition of his philosophy, and it is doubtful whether his inquiry extended much beyond the English version of Flood's mosaical philosophy. One thing at least is certain, the list which he gives of his writings in the last edition of his book is simply a transcript, quite acknowledged by the way from Fuller's worthies, and though he does not seem aware of the fact, is really unreasonably imperfect. So also when he undertook the pilgrimage to Burstead, as he states that he actually went there and remained in profound meditation before the monument of the reputed Rosicrucian, one must implicitly believe that he did, but it is not apparent from his narrative, which contains some notable inaccuracies, and any other man than poor Mr. Hargrave Jennings might have been called to account in the matter. Now, Burstead is not a remote place, being three miles along a dull main road from Maidstone, and at least at the present day, there is a railway station close by the village green. As a matter of enterprise, it is no great achievement to have visited the place, which has been done for the purposes of this paper by the present writer. Burstead Village lies off the Maidstone Road, and while the church occupies a site which is below the level of the road, it is still above the level of the village itself. It is a peaceful, pleasant spot ringed by the hills in the distance. A sweet and scented place, green with a hundred gardens of hops, an illustration of perfect retirement, but otherwise marked by no special individuality, for the church itself is void of any distinctive character. Though at the same time, as the accompanying engraving will show, it is well enough to look at it, above all on its ivied side. It is dedicated to the Holy Cross, and its architectural style is mainly perpendicular. For example, the picturesque tower in the eastern window. There is an aisle on the north side and something in the way of a minute transept which contains a minute organ has been added of recent years on the south side of the chancel. Within, the stained glass window of the chancel depicts somewhat vividly the descent from the cross, and there are paneled figures on the walls of apostles and female saints. On the floors and the walls of the aisle, there are many memorials of the Cage family numbers of whom are interred underneath. With these there is no concern here, but upon the eastern wall of this same narrow aisle there is an elaborate tablet which he, who perhaps is par excellence, the most illustrious philosopher by fire, erected to the memory of his mother. Morse aque bane vixit luerum. Elizabeth Andros, being of the ancient family of the Andros of Tavington in Somersetshire, was the first wife unto Sir Thomas Flood of Millgate Knight, by whom he had diverse sons and daughters whose names are expressed on his monument. What her matchless industry and housewifery was, and how amply she expressed herself in the entertainment of her friends, and in what laudable manner her hospitality was extended toward the poor, we need not express in writing, being that the essential characters thereof are engraved even to this very day in the hearts of such as are yet living who were conversant with her in her lifetime. She changed this mortal life for an immortal life on the 25th on January 1591. Accept a blessed soul as sacrifice, a filial signal of obedience, and let this marble memory suffice, although but 
and a part of recompense. To manifest the loyal duty of your son before his toilsome pilgrimage of life be done. Robert Flood, Esquire and Doctor of Medicine, erected this monument as a pious and memorial of his most beloved mother. Besides the armorial bearings at the top and angle of this tablet, there is a curious winged skull, the wings of which are painted blue while the skull itself is brown. Some interest naturally attaches to this memorial, more especially as the inscription is likely to have been the work of Flood himself. Far more important, however, is a cross on the floor of the chancel hard by the altar steps and bearing the following legend. In Jesuqui nihi omnia in vita morte resurgam, under this stone rests the body of Robert Flood, doctor of medicine, who changed this transitory life for an immortal life, the seventh day of September, Anno Domini, 1637 being 63 years of age, whose monument is erected in this chancel according to the form by him prescribed. Most people who in times recent have undertaken to write upon Flood have not failed to affirm that an exceedingly curious, not a little elaborate, and altogether occult monument was erected to his memory, as the above inscription indicates within the chancel of Burstead Church. It has survived the spoliation of civil war and the fanaticism of Puritan iconoclast, and it is there, so they say, to this day. It is there also that Mr. Hargrave Jennings performed his profound meditation. Will it be believed, after all, that the monument is not in the chancel and that, on the authority of the Vicar of Burstead, the very Reverend Canon Scarth, it must be something like forty years since it was removed to the vestry under the tower? There is no doubt about the matter. And it is to be feared there is no doubt after all that poor Mr. Jennings who describes his walk to Burstead in the mellow pleasantness of a summer morning did not go to Burstead at all, or at any rate did not enter the church, or again if he did enter had conditionated into the 17th century. Mr. Hargrave Jennings says that the tomb is an oblong square of dark slate colored marble on the left as you stand before the altar looking up the body of the small church towards the door. Nothing of the sort. The tomb is a plain flat stone with a small brass let into it, and as part of the chancel floor. Moreover, it is on the right and not on the left as you look west, which is what Mr. Jennings meant, but has expressed so clumsily. His reference is really to the monument, concerning which he goes on to inform us that there is a seated half-linked figure of flood. But again, nothing of the sort. The figure is not seated, and is really little more than a bust as the engraving shows which appears at the head of this paper. Finally, our misguided instructor gives part only of the Latin inscription and prints its metric portion as if it were not metric. The inscription is actually as follows. Sacred to the memory of the illustrious physician and man, Robert Flood, alias De Flutilis, doctor of both faculties, who after some years of traveling beyond seas, undertaken successfully for the improvement of his mind, was at length restored to his fatherland, and was not undeservedly received into the Society of the London College of Physicians. He peacefully exchanged life for death on the eighth day of the month of September, Anno Domini, 1637, in the 63rd year of age. This inscription is holy in Latin, and is accompanied by the following verses. Tejit senes nec speciosa tus cod patale menes tebe te camatemus anum ingeni vivant hic momentum tu non tibi cime sele scribit morde tuc sepulchrum pretella eternum pastoratit posse. Thomas Flood of Gore Court, Otham in Kent, Esquire, erected this monument to the happy memory of his most beloved uncle on the day of the month of August 1638. The entire monument is enclosed by an arch. There are armorial bearings behind the head of the bust, and on each side there were originally four books arranged, one above the other. Two only remain, respectively inscribed Mysterium Cabalisticum and Philosophy Sacra. A rugged and precipitous footpath brings the traveler going southeast of the church once more to the main road and opposite the lodge gate of Millgate House, in which Robert Flood was born. The engraving which accompanies this notice will give sufficient indication of its external appearance, which is quite in one of the best manners of the country seat of the 17th century. At the time of the writer's visit, the lodge was empty and open-windowed. 
The bosky winding road which led from gate to manor was somewhat wild and weedy. The cluster of tiny cottages amidst fern on the left, with an occasional suspicion of deer, were untenanted, and the house itself was empty. Here, beyond all doubt, was the reviewer's best opportunity, which he lost no time in successfully improving, and for the first time on record, whether for Kentish histories, like that of monumental Hasted, or for still more archaic visitations, the house itself was visited, and that in all exhaustiveness, even from roof to cellar. Mr. Hargrave Jennings, the writer mused before the strange mythological paintings which adorned the fine staircase, trod the echoing floor of the library and admired its beautiful oaken paneling, speculated in the splendid chimney corner of the great kitchen, passed with due reverence upstairs to the quaint and not too roomy drawing room of James I, and traversed the innumerable bedrooms in one of which flood was born. From almost every window there are charming views of a well-kept English lawn and English woodland vistas. The whole impression was fascinating enough, but here again there was nothing especially distinctive, and Millgate House, like Burstead Church, may be seen in one of its varieties in almost any English county, provided church or manor be four miles from any town. And I would also like to thank Nessicus again for helping with this video. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you very much.